I think we have to realise that COVID has brought significant disruption to the business sector. But arguably, much of the disruptive forces were in existence pre-COVID. And in fact, all COVID has done is accelerate many of these global macro themes, you know, such as uh, sustainability, uh, climate change, the move from hydrocarbon to electric. So I think leaders are really going to have to think about how do they guide their organisations through this period of transition over the next year or two as the new normal settles in? Well, it, it, people talk a lot about the new normal, don't they? And I don't think anybody really knows exactly what that's going to mean. We're, st we're still in a time where there's huge amounts of uncertainty in terms of how the pandemic itself is going to play out, what that's going to mean for different sectors, for different industries, for different sizes of business. And as a direct result of that, businesses just need to stay really agile. If you're a company that's part of an ecosystem where there's a failure within it, that impacts you. So this kind of data transparency point is critically important for people. Certainly what I've seen in my career, and I'm sure Andrew and John, you've probably seen this too, is too often you walk into an organisation, they've had a strategy, and then they've had some execution plans, and those execution plans have been around for a while, but they don't necessarily uh, deliver on them because they've gone into a sort of analysis paralysis of, you know, should we do it, shouldn't we do it, what's the benefit, and we go into these loops of analysis and actually decisions don't get made. So I think false decision making is around having the direction, it's about having the execution plan, it's about taking action. And in taking action, you have to have a culture that allows failure. Um, because not everything's going to work and that doesn't matter. You've got to pick yourself up and be able to adapt and pivot when things don't work. So you have to have a culture that empowers leaders lower down the organisations to make mistakes. The best strategy poorly executed is not a strategy at all. Whereas a second best strategy executed well is a strategy. And, and when you layer out those points, is that because people are choosing too optimistic a strategy or not? So I think what you say is true because actually you can have a good strategy executed or not, but the reality is the strategy is what you're actually doing. That is what is borne out. So if that isn't clear and tied up to where you're trying to go, it almost doesn't matter how good or bad it is. It's the reality of today and tomorrow. I've always been struck by the power of private equity to deliver a strategy in a way that we don't see in other businesses. And for me, you try and boil that down, it's about the use of data, so understanding what decisions need to be made and, and, and what's happening when you do make those decisions and you do, you do execute on them. It's down to huge amounts of transparency, rigorous follow-up, cross-functional, rapid decision-making, and incentive. What we're seeing now is a real sense of purpose for CEOs around the need to reshape and transform their businesses. And this is, you know, it's, it's cost, it's cash, it's operating model driven by simplification, but it's also driven by building the business, or reshaping the business, to put it in a position to create competitive advantage in the market ahead. If the pandemic has shown us anything is that you can do it and still win consumers. You know, being bold and decisive now is more important than ever before.